hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is tessie and today we'll be learning how to make this beautiful blouse if you've not subscribed to my channel kindly do so god bless you as you can see i've dropped out my basic pattern i have my shoulder line i came down to my chest line my bust points my under bust my waist and my top length so i came in by three and a half and I came down by three and a half. I connected my neckline. I came down for my shoulder slope by one inches and I just slanted it. And half of my armhole is four inches. I came in here and I just curved out my armhole. So what I'll be doing next now is on this bust point line, I'll be taking my nipple to nipple measurement divided by two inches and I'll add half an inch to it. So my nipple to nipple measurement is 8 inches. Divided by 2 will give me 4. 4 plus half will give me 4.5. I'm going to chalk 4.5 on this point. On the other boss, I'm just going to chalk 4 inches. Do not add allowance to it. So I had 4 inches there. I'm going to be chalking the same 4 inches here. And also on the top length, I'll chalk 4 inches. So as you can see, I have 4.5 here. 4 inches, 4 inches, and 4 inches. So I'll go ahead to connect these lines together. So I'll check what I have on this armhole line. So I placed my tape this way, and I'm just going to check. So as you can see, I have 10 inches. Divided by 2 will give me 5. So I'll just chalk out 5 inches on this point. Now, um, I'll be connecting that point to the underboss line. So, what I'll be doing next is I'll be placing my dart. Now, you need to know that all the dart will be on this side of my pattern. I'll be placing my dart on this part of the pattern. Now, before placing the dart on the boss point line, I'll be coming down by one inch. Why am I coming down by one inch? I do not want pointiness on this bust area. To eliminate that pointiness, I will come down by one inch. So I'll just come down by one inch, which I have here. As you can see. So now I'll be placing my dart. So on the under bust area, I'm going to be using two inches. If you're on the smaller size, use 1.5. If you're on the medium size, use 2 inches. And if you're on the big size, use 2.5. So I'll be using 2 inches for my dart. So I placed my tape at that bust point area. And I'm going to chalk 2 inches. And that 2 inches, I'll chalk it on the waist as well. And I'll also chalk it at the top length. Now I'll connect the lines together. At what I'll be doing now is I'll be connecting this underboss line to the one inches I came down at this point to this point. So now after doing that, what I'll be doing next is taking the dart on this part of the pattern. So for my dart, I'll be coming in by 1.5. If you are big, you can come in by 2 inches. But for me, I'll be using 1.5. So I just placed my tape on this point and I'm going to chalk 1.5, which is here, as you can see. So what I'll be doing now is this 1.5, I'm just going to connect it to the bust point area. So after doing that, this is what I have, as you can see. So what I'll be doing now is placing my measurement and replacing back the dart I took. This 1.5 I took, I'm going to replace it back here. So now, I'll go ahead now to place my measurement. So on the chest line, I'll place my bust measurement divided by 4. My bust measurement divided by 4 will give me 9.5, which I have here. So this 1.5 inches that I took, I'll place it back. And I'll also add my sewing allowance. So I'll be using 1.5 inches for my sewing allowance. I'll place it here. Now, on the waistline, I'm going to place my waist measurement divided by 4. So my waist divided by 4 will give me 8 inches. So I'll chop my 8 inches here. And this dart I took, 2 inches dart, I'll replace it back. And I'll add my 
1.5 inches sewing allowance, which is here. Now, on the top length, I'll be placing my hip measurement divided by 4. My hip divided by 4 will give me um, 10.5. So I'm going to chalk that 10.5 on this point. I'll place back the 2 inches that I took just here. And I'll be adding my 1.5 inches sewing allowance. I have it here. Now, I'll be connecting this point, this point, and this point together. So now I'll just go ahead to connect. So now just connect the point together. After connecting, this is what I have. Now for the ammo area, this will be my new armhole. So I'm just going to curve from this point. I'm just going to curve straight down to the chest line. This is what we have. So do not worry about the flare. I'm just trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys. So what I'll be doing now is I'm just going to be ticking out the areas I will be taking off. I'll just go ahead now to cut out this pattern for now. So guys, as you can see, this is what I have for the front part of my blouse. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to indicate this line so you guys will see. This so now we are done with the front pattern. This is what it looks like. So I'll go ahead now to cut out my back pattern. So guys, for the back, I have my zip allowance. After that point, I chalked my shoulder line. I came down to the chest, bust point, waistline, and my top length. I chalked my neck measurement. I used three and half by two inches. And I just curved it just like this. Then I came down at the shoulder by one inches for my shoulder slope. And I just connected. Then I chalked what I have here. I have eight inches. Divided by two is four. I, point, I placed the point there. Then I just curved out my armhole for the back. So now what we'll be doing now is taking our nipple to nipple measurement divided by two inches and I'll be adding half an inch on it. I'll chuck it on that bust point area. So my nipple to nipple divided by two will give me four plus half an inch. That's 4.5. So I'll chuck that 4.5 on the waist as well. Also on the top length. Now I'm just going to connect these lines together. So what I'll be doing now is I'll be placing my dart. But before I place my dart, on the bust point line, I'm just going to go up by 1 inches. So just go up on that point by 1 inches. As you can see, I'm going to connect it just like this. So after coming up by 1 inch, on the top length, I'll go up by two inches. So I went up by two inches, this point, and I went up from the boss by one inch. So what I'll be doing now is on this waistline, I'll be taking half an inch, half an inch for my dart. So I just chopped my half an inch here and also half an inch here. Now I'm going to connect these two points to meet this one inches I came up on the bust point and this point i'll connect it here so i want this back also in a precess that form what you just do for the back is very simple from this point just connect it straight down to this four inches point here that i have so now i am done i'm just going to place my measurement and add my sewing allowance on the chest line, my bust measurement divided by 4 plus 1.5 inches sewing allowance, which I have here. On the waistline, I'll place my waist measurement divided by 4, which is here. I'll place back the half an inch, half an inch, that's 1 inches that I took. And I'll add my 1.5 inches sewing allowance. On the top length, I'll place my hip measurement divided by 4. 
and I'll add my 1.5 inches sewing allowance. So I'll just go ahead now to blend the ammo area just like this. So now I'll connect them together. Now I'll be working on the zip area. I don't want my zip bulging at the back. So what I'll do is on this waistline, I'm just going to be taking half an inch off. So from that point, just chalk half an inch here. Now I'll be from this point, I'm just going to slant it up and i'm going to slant this place down but i will not get to the end of the top I'm, i will just come up by two inches so i'll come up by two inches have you seen from this point so i'm just going to slant from this point to this point then from this point i'm going to slant it up just watch what i'm doing so i have it this way so from this point i'm just going to slant till i get somewhere there and from this point i'm going to slant till i get somewhere here as you can see this is what i have you need to know that you know we took half an inch on this part so now your waist will be shortened by half an inch so you can replace that half an inch on this part and just connect but i i, I would just leave mine this way because i added 1.5 inches for my sewing allowance so this is it for the back pattern i'm just going to shade out the parts that will be taken off so this is it for the back i'm going to cut it out now now to achieve the flay part of this blouse what i will be doing now is i'll be working on it using a new pattern so now i got a new sheet of paper and i folded it into two and i'm just going to place the center front on it from that waistline so from your waistline place your pattern on it just like this now go ahead to pin them together just like this now after pinning it this is what it looks like now so what i'll be doing now is from this point i'm going to chalk out three inches you determine how full you want your flay you can use four inches you can use 2.5 you can use five inches you can use six inches it depends on how full you want it to be but for me i'll be using three inches for my flay so what i'll do is from this point i'm just going to chalk out three inches which i have here so what i will do now is connect from this my waistline slant it straight down to that three inches line from your waistline slant to the three inches so this is what i have see you don't want this place looking sharp so what i did was i will come up by two inches you can come up by one inches 1.5 it depends on how curvy you want it to be on this area so now i came up by two inches which is here so what i'll be doing now is just curving from this point i'm just going to curve it in here after cutting it this is what the center front look like as you can see so this is now my new waist shape so now i'll be doing same thing i did for the front part i'm just going to hold it up with my pin So I'll do the same thing I did on the front center front. I'm going to, from this point, I'm going to come in by three inches. So I'll come in by three inches and I'll also go in here by three inches. So now this is what we have. So we don't want this place sharp. Just the way we did on the center front, we are going to come up by two inches as well, here by two inches. And I'll also come in here by two inches. Then I'm going to curve it in and curve here too. So go ahead to just curve it in and also curve this part in. As you can see, this is what I have. Then I'll go ahead now to cut it out this way. 
so guys after cutting it out this is what i have for the side so guys for my back pattern as you can see this is my center front as you can see the zip area so i placed my back pattern on a new sheet of paper just the way i did for the front so from that point i'll come in by three inches and i'll also come in here by three inches so after coming in by three inches coming in here by three inches we all know what to do now you just connect from this waist connect here and from this point you connect here right so you come up by two inches here just the way we did on the front and we also come in here by two inches now i'm just going to shape them So now this is what the center back looks like. So now we'll do for the side back. And I'll be going up by two inches and also going up here by two inches. So I went up by two inches. And I went up here by two inches. So I'll go ahead now to curve them out. So this is what we have for the side. So after cutting out my fabric, this is what I have. As you can see, I have for the front and I have for the back. So what I did next was to add paper stay to it. I added paper stay to this. If you want your fleece standing very well, you can use the very hard one. They have different types of paper stay. So it depends on your preference, what you want. So I added paper stay to this and this as well. And I also went ahead to cut out my lining. As you can see, I added the soft stay on the lining. So now what I'll be doing is joining. So I'll take these back pieces aside and we'll be working on the front part. So just go ahead to open it up this way and open it up this way. So now what I'll do is place these two sides on the center front. I'll place this on this part and I'm going to be stitching half an inch till I get to the end of this part. So when you're stitching, make sure you're dragging this part to meet with this. And you do the same thing for this side as well. You place it this way and you stitch half an inch. Then you drag it till it gets to this end. So I'll go and stitch and show you guys what it looks like. So guys, I don't know if you guys can see it properly. This is what it looks like after stitching. So go ahead to open up this part and iron. Go ahead to open it up and you iron. So you do the same thing for the lining as well. So I'll do the same thing for the lining. So guys, this is my back pattern. As you can see, I'll be joining the back as well. So I'll take one of each of them and place them together. So I'm just going to place them together this way. And I'll go and join. I'll place it this way. And I'll be joining by half an inch till I get to this point. Now also do the same thing for this other side. And I also do the same thing for the lining as well. Guys, I'm so sorry. I've gone ahead to join the lining and the main fabric together because the video is coming very long. And you just go ahead to join your main fabric with the lining together. I added my zip already. As you can see, this is the back and the front pattern. So now, what you are expected to do is join the front and the back together, right? At the shoulder area. And also join your sleeve. So for this, I won't be making use of that puff sleeve because my fabric was not enough. So I had to do a petal sleeve. My fabric was not enough at all. So I had to do this sleeve. I have a tutorial on how to achieve this petal sleeve. I'll drop the link on the description box. You need to watch that video. So I'll attach this sleeve to this and I'll also shape my measurement and show you guys the result. I'm so sorry this video has to be a bit fast guys after stitching this is what i have this is what my top looks like and this is the back view i have zero bulge at the back hope this tutorial is helpful and also i will be dropping the link on how to achieve this 
sleeve it is very simple trust me so guys please do not forget to subscribe to the channel like the video and drop a comment i'll see you guys in the next class bye